Welcome to Warhammer Warscore Review. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Tyranid unit, the Malanthrope. The Malanthrope. The bane to a lot of Tyranid opponents. The poor guy isn't broken anymore, thanks to chapter approved. The model received a much needed points increase, but is still a potent force in Warhammer 40k. Nothing too impressive about its stats, except for 9 wounds. Being as it's a character, it'll be pretty tough to take this thing down in spite of its poor 5-up save. Like most Tyranid characters, it is a Synapse creature, and it has shadows in the war mode. So it is still a cheap unit that can keep your army in line. 5-inch move with fly, and no reason not to advance makes it pretty maneuverable, which is good as all its important abilities have very short ranges. Enhanced Toxic Miasma triggers at the end of a fight phase against enemy models within 1 inch of the mount throw. On a 4-up, they suffer a mortal wound. Prey Adaptation is a powerful ability and takes effect when the last model in an enemy unit is slain within 1 inch of the mount throw. All friendly high fleet models reroll ones to hit against models with the same faction keywords. This ability is faction wide and lasts for the rest of the game. Plus, it works in combat and in shooting. Getting both is hard to come by for Tyranids. This ability makes it somewhat attractive to send the Malanthrope into combat against something that is likely going to be destroyed in the same combat phase. The main attraction to Malanthropes is their ability called Shrouding Spores. The enemy has to subtract 1 from hit rolls with shooting against high fleet units within 3 inches of the Malanthrope. By the way, this is not stacked with Venomthropes. This ability is extremely potent and situationally better than the Venomthropes. The Malanthropes' main advantage is being able to hide behind units. Which unit is better really depends on the enemy and the units the Tyranid player is trying to protect. If the player wants to protect the monsters, they will need three or more Venomthropes, and once the enemy reduces them to two models, they can't protect monsters. Malanthropes are still the preferred models to protect monster units. If the Tyranid player is only protecting infantry units, the Venomthropes are often better a choice. Malanthropes can be set up with up to three models within six inches of each other and then act separately for the rest of the game. They cost a significant 140 points, up from 90 since chapter approved 2017. Before the changes, players were taking two or even three Malanthropes in an army, but I'm not sure if that will continue. Most likely, a tuned player will take a single Malanthrope just to protect a valuable firing base or combat force. When shrouding a firing base, the Malanthrope can sit back with some Tyranno effects or Exocrine. When the opponent gets close, it can move in and try to be near a unit when it's destroyed. When moving up with a combat force, the Malanthrope should stay near a solid combat monster or unit and leech off their prey. Sending a Malanthrope up with a Trigon Prime, Carnifex, or even Gene Sealers could have good results. Army-wide rerolls one to hit in combat and shooting is pretty influential. While the Tyranid player shouldn't go crazy and kamikaze the Malanthrope to get an augment, they should always keep it in the back of their mind on how they can achieve it. In a Tyranid army, there are plenty of ways to enhance the Malanthrope. If they're your Warlord, Alien Cunning allows the model to reposition before the game starts. This can be used to deploy them somewhere to throw the opponent off track, or move them out of view of enemy snipers. Whether the Malanthrope is sitting back or moving forward, Synaptic Linchpin would give it the benefit of giving off a 6 inch larger aura for Synapse. One of the few bio artifacts that would improve the Malanthrope is the Norn Crown, which increases the range to deny instinctive behavior to units within 30 inches. Only one high fleet psychic power would have much effect paired with a Malanthrope. The Horror would synergize well, reducing enemy to hit by minus one. Paired with the Malanthrope, this could be giving the Tyranid Force a minus two to hit modifier. In addition to this, a couple stratagems may prove useful. Rapid regeneration to heal D3 wounds back, and abilities like Implant Attack and Adrenaline Surge could deal the final wounds to destroy a unit, triggering the Malanthrope's Prey Adaptation rule. High Fleet Adaptations offer a bit to Malanthropes as well. High Fleet Gorgon would have a slight benefit in their Warlord trait, giving the Tyranid player another chance at scoring a mortal wound at the end of the fight phase on a 4-up. 
Leviathan adds a bit of extra defense and a 6-up save against Wounds and Mortal Wounds. Leviathan also offers an oddly worded stratagem called War on All Fronts. This ability can be used against an enemy unit in combat with one tier in the unit with fly and one without fly. This is a decent stratagem when used paired with a combat force. Using this when the Trigon Prime or Carnifex is next to a Malanthrop and goes a swing may have decent results. Kraken's adaptation will be somewhat beneficial for the Malanthropes, but their bio artifact is what makes it worth mentioning. This item would reduce enemy shooting by minus one to hit. Pairing with the model's innate shrouding spores ability, making it minus two to hit. Even if the opponent has snipers to target the Malanthrope, they're likely not going to be able to hit it with a minus two reduction. Plus it has a stratagem that would allow the Malanthrope to double its advance roll, making it better able to keep up with fast units. Kraken's Warlord trait is also fairly unique and wouldn't benefit the Malanthrope, but would synergize well with it. Select a Kraken unit within 6 inches of the Warlord in each fight phase. That unit can fight first if it is charged. Jormungandr would have an interesting complementary effect with the Malanthrope's Shrouding Spores. Their Warlord trait allows Tyranid units within 3 inches to ignore the enemy's bonus to their saves for cover. This Warlord trait is good when protecting a firing base. While the High Fleet's adaptation wouldn't affect Malanthropes, it would have the effect of further protecting important models, combining well with Shrouding Spores. Jormungandr also has an interesting stratagem that could be used to deploy the Malanthrope in reserves with other units. This could be used to shroud a more mobile force. The Malanthrope may benefit from multiple High Fleets, but it really is a viable part of any of them. Minus one to hit is always welcome, and is one of the more potent Tyranid aura abilities. Malanthropes were extremely calm before the changes, and with the points increases, they will likely be less ubiquitous, but still common. If you encounter a Malanthrope or two, try to focus fire the things around it, and don't spend too much time trying to kill it. Unless you can charge it, it will be hard to destroy the model. It may be tempting, but snipers have a hard time killing it with all those wounds. Unless you're firing some really powerful marksmen at them, save those shots for surrounding units. Malanthropes receive a 4 out of 5. They are now a reasonable amount of points and still pack a potent augment. Even with these complaints, you will still see these models showing up on the tabletop. What do you think of the points adjustments to the Malanthropes? What units would you like to see reviewed on the channel? Put your thoughts in the comments below, and thanks for watching.